In this lecture, we'll talk directly about how diversification can improve shareholder value, improve competitive advantage. In other words, why can you use a diversification strategy to improve the position you are in vis-a-vis -vis prior to diversification? What is it that allows you to create this, share, this, this competitive advantage and shareholder value? Essentially, you look at the value chain and the various elements of the business in their industries, and you want to try to find these cross-benefit or cross-industry benefits. That's really what you're after. The idea is that you want to find some way that you could increase shareholder value from these synergy ideas that we described before, something where you can do things better together than you would do apart. This is only, only possible if there is some aspect of your businesses that are related, related diversification. Uh, changing the operation of your business, integrating various functions, that sort of thing across businesses implies there's a relationship in some manner in the business. It could be the brand, it could be the markets, it could be the territories, or it just could be the industries, uh, different technologies that are used or places you're at along the value chain. But this is how one goes about creating this value when you invest in related businesses. You requires some actions internal to the business, the businesses, that integrates them in some way so that the whole becomes better than the sum of the parts. That's the key idea that you want to think about whenever you're thinking of related acquisitions. And really when you think about building, if you will, an empire, that's stronger than anyone else in terms of your industry. Related acquisitions can allow you to do that because if you're in a position in the right markets and having the right technology access and all of that that other people don't have, you have a unique position. And the way you decide whether or not an acquisition will ultimately help you achieve that objective is the notion of a better off test. Am I better off because I've done what I have done and have I improved this, the position for my shareholders? Now, what about diversification in unrelated businesses? Essentially, if you're going to be evaluating whether you enter a business that's unrelated, generally that would be with an acquisition where you're building up a portfolio, you buy a different business that's not related to your prior businesses. Why might you do that? Well, it might be that you just get a really good deal. A company is presented to you that you feel is undervalued and that there are things that you can do to improve it. So you might look at how attractive the industry is. You might value it, use some of the skills that are inherent in your business, value it, and then make an acquisition or acquisitions in that territory in order to somehow enhance the, the profitability of the very asset that you're purchasing. In other words, you buy it and you run it to be more effective than other companies might do it. This is one of the things that Warren Buffett does. He's, re he's been in the news about him moving into, um, into auto, automobile uh, retail sales. And that would be a, an idea of entering into a new industry with acquisitions because you feel that you are able to take some advantage of, of uh, the current condition of the industry and that your management skills themselves will help bring those, uh, those values forward. So what do you need to do? You need to, have, you need to be a, have a set of skills about managing a portfolio of businesses. You have to be very good at being a corporate parent, if you will. The idea of parenting and knowing how to run a portfolio of businesses effectively. Um, in the days of um, Jack Welch, uh, GE was known that it had many different businesses and when it would decide what to do with the business, they said they had to be first or second in their industry. And that was the measure. And if you couldn't get to first or second in your industry, that company would be sold, sold off. So if you feel like you have tremendous management skills as a parent organization to transfer from one business unit to another, you might say, I can do better. I can create a more profitable business than the one that's currently out there. That's the, uh, the hubris, if you will, associated with unrelated diversification. You have to really believe you know how to restructure a company in some way undervalued and you can run it more effectively. You can run it better than others. So that's this idea of being a corporate parent. If you're very good at buying companies, fixing them, and then running them, and make them more profitable than they were, you can make money at this. It's different than related investment, though, because you're not looking for synergy across businesses. You're just assuming 
and making the assertion and betting your resources that you have a way to do that. You have a set of funds and you can distribute them into other businesses and that you are good at that. Your skills will allow you to succeed at this, I would say, very difficult uh, way to make, uh, make a lot of money. You have to really be good at what you do and typically that means you make money by cutting costs or entering into a new market that other people would not have been able to do because they don't have access to the financial resources to do that. Organizations like this often have an umbrella brand, something that they layer over top of it. It's, it's often the company name or the family name, but the businesses are run as independent entities um, underneath. And most people that would know the companies know the brands of the companies that are run, not necessarily the overarching brand. One of the ways that this is done is by this notion of restructuring, which means you come into the business, it might have too many, um, too many units, it might have a balance sheet that has a lot of assets on it that aren't really productive that you can sell off. Um, it might be the management team is too heavy or, in the, or has the wrong kind of skills. You can come in and you essentially look at the internal operations of the business. You restructure, change how it works, change how it faces the customers, maybe make some changes in advertising marketing. You essentially go in like a doctor and fix it. This is what um, uh, private equity firms tend to do. Um, lots of investment firms tend to do, that, do this. And it's like in the real estate world, you buy a fixer-upper house and then you fix it up and then you sell it for a profit because it was, in a, it was not cared for or whatever and then you fix it and you sell it. Similar, you buy a company that hasn't really been cared for, it might be a family-run company or something like that and the third or fourth generation has been running it and they're not really fully engaged. You could buy a company like that and turn it into a really uh, well-oiled machine. Private equity tends to do this. Bain Capital did this. Uh, Mitt Romney, a person in the news, had done this and, and you hear some news about the sorts of decisions that were made as they restructured various businesses. So that's how you make, how you create competitive advantage either in the industry you're working on or if you're doing unrelated acquisitions, how you do it within your company by essentially making the organization more efficient and more effective. In the next uh, lecture, we'll talk more specifically about the notion of shareholder value and how it's created more directly. And that's what we'll talk about in Lecture 7. We'll see you then.